So bags, if you're gonna be looking to buy your first hockey bag, or even if you're looking to just upgrade it, there's a few different options, so we wanted to put this video together just to tell you a little bit about them to help your decision between which ones you should get a little bit easier. Now the first one is gonna be the hockey carry bag or the shoulder bag. This is gonna easily be the most traditional hockey bag and the most popular one. Now this pretty much just consists of one pouch that you throw all of your hockey equipment into and a zip, and of course the straps to be able to throw the bag over your shoulder. Now with these bags, it's just one compartment to put everything in. That means all of the little things that you have inside your hockey bag, your tape, your car keys, your wallet, spare change of clothes, shower gel, all of that stuff gets mixed in and it can be quite tricky when all the equipment's in there because you have to sieve through the bag trying to find anything that you might need to find. So that can be quite annoying. Now the way around this, with the different carry bag options, you normally have quite a nice selection. And the way it works is that the more money you spend, the more features and compartments and durability the bag should have. That's a rule of thumb that you can sort of base your choice on these on. Now don't forget that hockey bags come in different weights and sizes. That's gonna be down to what features they have and what style of bags that they are. But make sure you buy the right bag for the right size equipment that you have. So next up is gonna be the wheeled bag. This is gonna be pretty much the same as your carry bag, except this one has wheels on it. Now we've all heard the sayings that hockey players throw around. If your bag has wheels, chances are you don't. But just remember, buying a bag is about practicality. I know these things are gonna buzz inside the locker rooms if you have a bag that nobody likes or nobody's used to seeing, but it's about what's gonna be practical for you as a player, not what everyone around you is saying. Now, us personally, we travel a lot. So having a carry bag full of your hockey equipment, camera equipment, extra clothes that we like to pack, and also smaller bags that we stick inside our hockey bags, and throwing that over your shoulder and walking across Gatwick Airport in London, it's not an easy task. Having wheels means you can drag the bag behind you, saves you energy, makes things a lot more practical and easy, but most importantly, let's save our energy and effort for the ice, not walking around the streets with our bags. Of course, one of the downsides with wheel bags is gonna be the weight. They have a lot of extra things that go on them, the wheels, the handles, support rods and beams, which means they're gonna weigh a little bit more than a standard bag. So if you're gonna be traveling with your hockey equipment, remember that that bag's gonna cost a little bit more for you to be able to stick onto a plane because of the weight. Aside from that, the wheel bags, of course, have the exact same features as the carry bags. The more you pay for your wheel, normally, means the more features you'll get, i.e. pockets for your keys, for your tape, somewhere to put your helmet where it's not gonna get scratched. So keep those points in mind when selecting these kinds of bags. Now, another type of bag, which is gonna be fairly rare. Anyways, from the rink that we're at, we don't see these kinds of bags very often, and that's gonna be the backpack bags. Now, the great thing about these things is that it leaves both of your hands free because it's a bag for hockey equipment that's styled on a backpack. So it goes straight onto your back. You don't have anything to carry in your hands except maybe your sticks if you don't strap them to the bag. But it means that if you use public transport while you're trying to get to the rink, buses, trains, you have both your hands free. So it's gonna be a lot easier to move around. So that's gonna be a bonus. And of course, we live in Europe, not the USA or Canada. So houses here, doorways, alleys, everything tends to be much, much smaller and a lot more narrow. So it's, if you're tight for space, walking through doorways and things like that, the backpack bag might be a good option for you because it's much more compact than some of the other hockey bags that you see out there. And it's also gonna be great for anyone that carpools because again, because it's compact, it takes minimal space up inside a car. So you're gonna have more space for everyone else that you're sharing with. With the backpack bags, one of the negative sides to them is that if you need to carry extra things for hockey, if you're the guy that carries the pucks, you need to carry some of the team's jerseys or any extra things like that, because it's a very compact bag, you're not gonna be able to fit very much in it. So that's definitely gonna be something to keep in mind. If you like to go to hockey with extra things, extra jerseys, pucks, then you might be better off going for a slightly bigger bag like the carrier bags or one of the wheeled bags. So keep that in mind. Now last up, but definitely not least, is gonna be the Grit Tower bag. This is gonna be one of my personal favorites and it's because of how well organized this bag makes you be. Now because the Grit Tower bag stands upright, unlike a normal bag which lies flat, it also has shelves inside the bag so you can see everything inside um, your hockey bag nice and clearly and everything has its own place, your helmet, your skates. So if something's missing, you're able to see that really, really quickly without having to sieve through the bag to see what's um, not in there that you might have forgotten. Now I'm gonna be looking at you players out there that forget your skates. This will be an excellent bag for you to get. But it's also great for young players who are learning to pack their own hockey bags themselves because it makes it really easy to identify when something's missing because everything has its own place. If something's not there, you can see it because there's an empty space. So these are definitely gonna be a recommended bag for anyone out there that wants to be more organized, wants more space in the locker room. Because the bag stands upright, you use much less space around you. So when you're in a crowded locker room, you get to just sit down and get ready with your equipment in front of you. You don't have to bend over reaching for stuff. It just makes things a lot more easy, a lot more practical, and keeps you very organized. And come on, what hockey player doesn't wanna be organized and ready for a game? So they're definitely gonna be a good choice. 
and also with the grit tower bags again with these bags are fantastic and are very organized for you to be able to put all of your hockey essentials in but that's the key word there essentials if you have extras that you wouldn't normally traditionally put in a hockey bag or normal players normally wouldn't carry them with them then that's where you're going to struggle because the bag's not been designed for a lot of miscellaneous hockey bits to be shoved inside it so you need to keep this in mind if you need to carry a lot of extra bits to the rink now as a quick side note Oversizing, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, is something that a lot of people do. When you buy a bag, make sure that it fits the size of the equipment that you have. But if you travel, you go abroad with your hockey equipment, what we normally tend to do is take our hockey bags, put little bags inside the hockey bags with our clothes, and we also put our camera equipment inside there, which means if you have a bag that fits your equipment perfectly, you're not going to have room for these extra bits. So if you need to do things like this, then that's where oversizing your bag can come in quite handy because you have that extra space. But otherwise, if this isn't something that you normally do, then make sure you go for a bag that fits the size of equipment that you have. Normally, the more money that you pay for a bag, you'll get a little increase in the durability of the bag. The fibers will be a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger to prevent breaking down prematurely. So that's another thing to bear in mind. If you're gonna be using your bag long-term, multiple times per week, it might be worth spending the extra to get a bit more durability. As always, thanks a lot for watching the video. If you think there was anything that we missed out of this one, or if there's a type of bag that we've not covered because we don't know about it, please comment down below, let us know. And a quick side note is that if there's anything you ever want us to shoot, comment down below and let us know what videos you'd like us to see shoot next. We really value what you have to say and just want to give you the content that is going to benefit you. So leave some comments down below. Let us know what you want to see next. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as always. Stay tuned for the next videos and make sure you're following us across the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, also Snapchat. Stay in touch with us and take care till next time. Subscribe. Your edges play a massive role. That's where you're going to be able to get your resistance to be able to push back where you're going to be able to get your strength from, and of course, where you get all of your control from as well.